So this is the road blimp 2. I'm standing in the middle of a field with quite a strong breeze blowing across. There's meant to be 20, 30 mile an hour winds here today and it's strong enough to blow over my microphone just sitting on the ground so it's, it's quite strong. It comes in big um, bluffs it, but there's a good general breeze all the time. Um, there's one now. This is what the microphone sounds like with the wind protection on. I have the blimp and the fur cover and, but there is no protection around the microphone itself so it's just the microphone suspended in there. No foam windshield inside. I'm hand holding it because it's a bit too windy to put on a um, on a lightweight light stand because it's blowing it over. I've just left it on the ground and it almost blew it right over so I'm hold, hand holding it to prevent that. The microphone on top of the camera is the Vogue Video Mic Pro and now I'm over exposed again and that's recording that's got the wind protection on it as well the dead cat and we'll see how that compares the microphone on top of the camera is the Vogue Video Mic Pro and now I'm over exposed again and that's recording that's got the wind protection on it as well the dead cat and we'll see how that compares I'm going to go back in now and take off the wind protection and just put the foam cover on to see how that compares to this. This is the NTG2 microphone with the foam cover and the dead cat. The wind's about the same as it was earlier, maybe a tad lighter, but still about the same in the gusts. I still have it being fed into my Mix Pre 3. This is the sound. If I've done anything to the audio other than raise this volume, I'll put it in the bottom of the screen now, but I'll probably have just raised the levels. Here's a moment of silence, so you can see how it performs. Here's a moment of silence, so you can see how it performs. Today we're reviewing the Rode Blimp version 2. This is the new but quite old now at this point, Blimp from Rode. It came from Amazon, so I've got to get through the Amazon packaging first. Came in quite a large box. I'll blur my name. Standard amount of paper for you know. the box isn't in the best nick, it's a bit squished 
it looks like it's been crushed slightly, so I'll have to check everything's okay inside. Inside the box we have a manual. In all the different languages. A screwdriver with, I don't recognize the end. A comb that folds out quite nicely for combing the fur. And the blimp itself. It's surrounded with polystyrene, so that hopefully has kept it safe. But there is limited on the top and the bottom, it's only on the ends, the polystyrene. It doesn't come in a bag, I really thought it would. Let's put that there. and the dead wombat or dead cat. The only thing left in the box is the other bit of polystyrene that was at the other end. So nothing else in there. Using the 3 8 inch thread on the bottom, I'm going to mount a little tripod to it so I can easily display how this works. This is not the standard boom thread, this is a 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch thread, which is different. You would need an adapter from a boom pole. Although many boom poles have a 3 8 inch thread mounted onto their top jack as well. I've, I'll list the parts I've used in the description, but the main tripod is a small rig um, tabletop tripod which comes with a head which I've removed and it has a 3 8 inch thread at the top of, of the part which interlocks with the extension tube which I've put on which also has a 3 8 inch female thread which then terminates with a 3 8 inch male thread which is now in the boom pole. To remove the windshield, unscrew the rear dome, then loosen the two threaded parts, which are the two knobs which are underneath. This will then allow this whole assembly. Oh, I didn't loosen it enough. Exposing the connectors. These are adjustable using the Allen wrench, using the screwdriver found in the pack. I'm going to use it to mount a Rode NTG2 microphone. As the clips are, they are two far apart, so I'm going to use a little screwdriver to loosen the head. Then move them closer together. And then tighten the head. That now still fits. Finally plug in the XLR cable. The 
Then to put the cover back on, it's the same procedure as taking it off. You slide this back over. This was a very tricky to get this over the top. I tried performing some control tests. To do this, I put some speakers facing the microphone and then tested them using a sine wave running from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And it swept across all of the frequencies. I tested it with just the foam cover and then the foam cover and the blimp. And finally the foam cover, the blimp and the fur cover. Unfortunately, all I really learned from these tests was how terrible my speakers were. They are very old and in desperate need of replacement. You can see that the spike go across for the frequency, but there isn't enough data there to be analysed further, so I didn't um, do any further analysis on it. I couldn't see any from the initial test of any major difference between the three different types of protection. They all look roughly the same. Is this the improved version 2 of the blimp or is it blimp 1? The version I reviewed is version 2. It doesn't say it anywhere on the box or the packaging which is very unhelpful but the new version has the new mounting system. The old version had just kind of rubber bands as the mounting system which held it within the tube. The new system has a proper mounting solution from Rycote. Is it waterproof? It is a tube mainly made out of plastic with a fabric liner. This will catch the rain and soak it up a bit like a t-shirt but it won't prevent the rain from getting onto the microphone and the sensitive electronic equipment inside. If it does rain on it, it probably will survive a few spits and absorb it, but I wouldn't use it in the wet weather. Can you mount it on top of your camera? Yes you can, but you shouldn't. It's much larger than any of the on-camera microphones. When compared to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, it's significantly larger, and I've had problems when filming in a windy environment with that smaller microphone. In a windy environment, it acts like a sail. It will catch the wind and pull the camera over or damage the hot shoe. Does it come with the dead cat? As you can clearly see in my unboxing, it does come with a dead cat. Can I use it indoors? I'm recording this whole voiceover using the, the microphone in its fur wind cover and it's You'll be able to tell how it sounds because I can't hear it at the moment. But I'm in a windless room which is relatively quiet. I'm about a metre away from the microphone. Make that half a metre away from the microphone. I'm recording this voiceover using the microphone in its wind protection and fur cover. I've also left the foam cover on the microphone itself. I wanted to see if this would work as... Would it, if it would dampen the sound any more? 
So I left it all on there. This is kind of the maximum solution I could envision using it. Can you remove the handle? Yes, you can. It has a nut on the bottom of the windshield that you can remove the handle. This is not a captive nut, so if you unscrew it too much, the nut comes off, or the wheel that you turn comes off, and a little washer falls off, and then it separates into two parts, the handle and the threaded rod which is attached to the main body. This allows it to be smaller. It's slightly irritating though, because it doesn't take many turns to unthread it. I think it's only like eight turns or something like that, so not many. So you could accidentally turn it too much and the whole thing falls apart. I don't know if I would have preferred it to be a captive system because it is still quite small when it's folded up. Or something you need to use a tool like a screwdriver to undo. That way you can't do it accidentally. My thoughts on the product. It's very expensive for what it is. It is in the end a plastic tube with a bit of material around it but its shock protection worked better than I expected. When doing my tests outside I handheld the microphone and I couldn't hear any of the ha handling noise. This is much better than when I used my old system which had some handling noise when I touched the microphone stand. I found the dead cat the most irritating thing about it. It is incredibly difficult to get on and off. I found the easiest way to do it is to prop it over the end and then wiggle it down either side. Don't try to pull it over the end first. This makes it unappealing to use. Whenever a bit of equipment becomes irritating, you think, oh, I don't want to go through that to put the, the wind protection back on again. It almost nullifies its purpose. So I think it's going to remain, it's kind of, you put it on at the start of the suit and then you want to leave it on. You can't put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. I feel you, that would just irritate me too much. It's plastic construction worries me slightly too. It's, I've seen, all of them are plastic, so I don't think there's much you can do about it. But some of the plastic films feels quite thin. The wind tests outside were very successful. It when compared to the microphone on top of the camera, which had its own wind protection, I was pleased by how be much better it did. It cut down all of the wind noise. It wasn't significantly better, it wasn't like night and day better compared to the wind protection of just the dead cat on the microphone itself, but it was an improvement all the same. I feel I need to do more testing to come up with a better conclusion. I, if I I will add a comment in the section below saying how I feel about it after, say, six months of use.